The Pokemon series is no stranger to the remake treatment. From Heart Gold and Soul Silver to more recent entries such as Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, the series makes a regular attempt to bring older games to newer systems. The most recent titles to get this treatment is Diamond and Pearl, which has been released for the Nintendo Switch as Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. The approach is slightly different with this remake opting for a no frills experience while still improving on a number of things. The result is one that, for the most part, works pretty well. The game's story is pretty much the same as any other game in the series. You play as a kid who leaves their home with the dream of becoming a Pokemon master. You'll get your very first Pokemon, take on the gym challenge, and maybe even save the world. This premise has been used for the start of each mainline game, however I will admit that it still made me excited to get started on my journey to be the very best like no one ever was. The core gameplay loop of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl is the same as other mainline titles from the series. You collect Pokemon by catching them and then use them to battle other trainers and of course gym leaders. Additionally, you'll fight members of a villainous group called Team Galactic in order to foil any nefarious plans they might have. While the gameplay is the same, some quality of life improvements have been introduced to make the game more enjoyable. For one, it employs a feature available in later games where you don't have to teach hidden moves or HMs to one of the Pokemon in your party using up a vital slot in their moveset. Instead, these are given to you as abilities and can be activated by either going into your Poketch or facing the obstacle in question, be it a rock, tree or body of water. Funny enough, the Pokemon that's summoned to perform the ability is a Bidoof, which in the original game was notorious for being kept in the party purely because of the HM compatibility. This fixes that and allows you to keep your moveset focused on battling. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are remakes that take a no frills approach in that they don't really add too many recent features into the game, such as Mega Evolution or Dynamaxing. The battle system is quite faithful to the original game, but it's nice that they've added in the feature that tells you how effective your Pokemon's moves will be against an opponent if you face that Pokemon before. The Underground also makes a return in the remake, however it's been revamped and renamed to the Grand Underground. In the original games, the Underground allowed you to create your own secret base, decorate it and also mine for items. These are intact except for the ability to decorate your base. Additionally, the Grand Underground introduces rooms called Pokemon Hideaways. These contain different Pokemon that you can battle and catch, and the best part is that some Pokemon can only be found in one of these rooms, which helps with completing your Pokedex. Mining for items is still pretty much the same and tasks you with excavating all the items before the wall collapses. However, statues found while mining can be placed in your secret base and can actually influence the type of Pokemon that will spawn in the hideaways. It's not a major change, but it not only makes the Grand Underground essential for completing your Pokedex, but also a fun distraction from the main game. Not all the changes in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are good ones though. In fact, some things haven't changed at all. Technical machines or TMs are great for teaching your Pokemon powerful moves without having to wait for them to learn it on their own. However, unlike more recent games in the series, TMs don't have unlimited uses and will instead break after being used. This is a bit disappointing since TMs having unlimited uses have become the standard and felt like a quality of life improvement when it was initially introduced. This feels like a step back from that, especially if you're the kind of player who enjoys changing up their party now and then. The EXP share has seen a change, but possibly not the best one. Generally, this is most likely a feature that players have left on, but the optional is always there to turn it off if need be. The EXP share in the remakes is on by default with no way to toggle it off. Players who enjoy the grind of training their Pokemon individually will be disappointed by this since that isn't even an option anymore. Additionally, if you want to put a new lower level Pokemon in your team to level them up, the only way to avoid over leveling your current party is by storing them in the PC, which feels like a bit of a hassle. Getting the remake treatment, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are presented in a new coat of paint. Specifically, the overworld features a 3D chibi art style with a top-down perspective that is reminiscent of the older games. During battles, however, it has a more modern style and looks really good. It's a good blend that delivers an experience that feels like a throwback to older titles while still retaining some of the visual enhancements of later games. The environment during battles also look particularly great, especially when it comes to the gym leaders. The audio is also great. The game's soundtrack has been remastered to make it sound a lot warmer while maintaining the charm of the original tracks. 
Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are great. It's a remake that feels like it stays quite close to the source material while also introducing some much needed quality of life improvements from later titles. However, it does stumble a bit in this regard thanks to some odd design choices with TMs and the EXP share. The Grand Underground is a nice addition though. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl feels like a good throwback to Pokemon games of old, however some longtime fans might find that it plays it a little safe in its execution, which admittedly is a little disappointing. Despite this, I did have a good time revisiting the Sinnoh region. If you're a newcomer or just want to experience the game with updated visuals and some improvements, then this might be a good fit for you. If you enjoyed this review, please hit that like button, and if you are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. And if you got your hands on Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, please let me know what you thought of the game in the comment section down below. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time.